Hi, I'm Jeremy with the Howard County Library System. For today's project, we're going to be creating a t-shirt design that inspires social change. We'll also learn about the tools and processes necessary to screen print that design on clothing. Let's get started. Since we know a motive is to inspire social change, we first need to figure out what issue we're going to be focusing on. For my design, I'll be focusing on racial profiling, implicit bias, and police brutality. Next, you'll need to figure out who your audience is. Who do you want to be impacted by your design? For me, I want everyone to be impacted. Now it's time to start brainstorming our design. Something to always keep in mind when creating a t-shirt design is that ultimately the artwork will be mobile. So even in the best case scenario, a viewer will only have two to three seconds to see your work, interpret it, and have it make an impact on them. So it's much better for you to keep your design simple and direct rather than muddy it up and make it confusing because it has too much, uh, too many design elements, too much going on. Other things to keep in mind and to continuously ask yourself while you're creating this design are, does it make sense? Could it be misunderstood? Does it need text? Does it need imagery? Does it need both? And can it be simplified? If you continuously ask yourself these questions as you're creating your design, you'll be able to sort out things that really aren't helping and are hurting the design. Okay, so let's jump ahead and take a look at what I came up with for my final product. Then I'll walk you through the steps, tools, and design choices that got me here. And uh, hopefully it'll give you some ideas for when you're creating your own design. My first thought was, what do I want to say? And I kept coming back to a song off Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt album titled, Can I Live? And the words in this context, can I live, were serving as a question, a statement, and even a prayer in some cases. And because the phrase, can I live, reads as a question, you're immediately engaging the viewer with this idea that as the wearer, I know I'm going to die, but it's you who's going to kill me. Next, I decided I needed imagery to drive home the reality and seriousness of death. So I chose an image of a closed casket adorned with flowers. To me, this image is something that's iconic. It's somber, it's widely recognizable, and it has a connection with all of us. Now that we brainstormed and have done image research, it's time to start creating our design. So the first thing I'm gonna do is print out the imagery I've selected and I'm gonna trace it. While tracing, the goal is to trace the highlights and the shadows and what it's going to allow us to do is separate the tonal values and prepare our design to be a one color print. A one color print means the design is printed in only one color of ink and usually it's in a tonal value that contrasts the shirt color. So if you have a white shirt, uh, you have black ink. If you have a black shirt, it's going to be white ink. So the thing about one color prints is that um, there are no middle tones. So you either have a highlight or a shadow, that's it. So if your design has a lot of middle tones, you're going to have to decide whether or not those middle tones are reading best as highlights or shadows. Once you've completed tracing, you should have an image that looks something like this, where the design has been broken down into shapes for the most part. Rather than using a computer font, I chose to use my own handwriting to give it a more personal feel. Right now I'm cutting off the font so that I can reposition it better and get it centered.
Now that we have our design template laid out and properly sized, we're gonna retrace our design on a transparency paper and use oil-based markers to fill in the design. At this point, you wanna mark where the center point of your design is as well. Next, you're gonna to wanna to tape the design to the transparency paper so it doesn't move around on you. Now it's time to color separate our design using oil-based paint markers. I like the Sharpie brand markers. They're very opaque and they come in different sizes so you can do fine detailed work. And um, oil-based paint markers are the best ones to use because they don't let any light through, which is something that's really necessary when you are developing your screen. Once you've completed color separating, your design should look something like this. Notice that the design is comprised of only two tonal values. Also notice that for me, my tonal values are inversed. And this is so that I can print in white on a black shirt. Now, if you were gonna be printing in black on a white shirt, this is what the tonal values would look like. Right, so they look normal. So you need to keep that in mind when you're designing. And yeah, sure, you can do this on the computer. You could take a picture of something and just you know, use Photoshop or Illustrator. But me personally, I like all my designs to have the feel that they were drawn by hand. It just seems more vintage, more classic, and uh, more original. Okay, now that we have our design completed, we're going to start preparing our screen. The first step with the new screen is to wash the screen and degrease it. Brand new screens have a thin oily coating on them, and if you don't wash it off, the emulsion won't adhere properly. So, right here I'm using a citrus-based degreaser that I got from Home Depot. And when you are degreasing and washing your screen, make sure that you really wash it and rinse it thoroughly. Make sure that you wash both sides, rinse both sides, sometimes do it twice. Um, you really want to make sure that you have all of that oily coating off the screen. Some of the tools I'm using right now are a mini washout booth, and the mini washout booth is meant to sit on the tabletop or over top of your sink in the bathroom so you can do like DIY screen printing at home. And the screen that I'm using is a 160 screen and the 160 is referring to the mesh size. The higher the mesh, the more detail that you're able to get out of the screen. But the higher the mesh, the harder it is to push the ink through the screen. So the 160 is like the middle of the road, but it does a really good job at capturing detail and delivering a good uh, ink deposit. And now we're gonna let this dry. All right, so now that our screen is dry, we're gonna go ahead and put a motion on it and prepare it for the design. In order to coat your screen with photo emulsion, you'll need to be working in a light tight room that you can make pitch black, which is what I'm showing you now. Um, you'll also need to have a light safe dark room light bulb that's UV free and that's so you can see as you're working. Now I'm going to coat my screen with the photo emulsion. Right now I'm pouring the emulsion into the scoop coater and then you want to evenly disperse the emulsion throughout the scoop coater so that you can get a good even coat on the screen. Okay, so when coating your screen, you want to let all the emulsion run towards the edge of the scoop coater as you slide it up the screen. 
and you want to start on the back side of the screen first and then do the inside of the screen um, and this is a perfect example of not having all the emulsion evenly dispersed so you don't want that okay at all um, let's see if I can do this one more time all right that looks a lot better so now you want to do the inside and this is so that all the emulsion gets pushed to the back side of the screen because when you go to print you're going to be printing on this side you're going to be pulling all the ink through that side right there okay and now we're going to be putting our screen into a light tight compartment so it can dry while the screen dries we can go ahead and start preparing our platen, which is the surface that holds the t-shirt for printing. Um, you wanna prepare your platen by creating a vertical line directly through the center of the platen. You can draw it with a marker. And then you also want several perpendicular lines that are going across the platen, uh, roughly in the middle of it. And these lines will be used to help us register our uh, design and register our screen. Now we're going to get our design registered and lined up. Notice the three red dots. Those are where my registration marks are located, and they've been aligned with the lines on the platen, so my design is nice and straight. Next, I'm going to be taking some double-sided tape or just regular tape and roll it over, uh, preferably clear scotch tape. And you want to position that around the edges of your design so that the design can stick to the screen once the screen touches it. So the screen's gonna come down, touch the design, it'll pick it up, and then we will expose it on the light box. All right, so we've turned the studio back into the dark room and we have our screen out. I've positioned it on the press and now I'm making sure that my design is positioned nicely and in the center of the screen. Now we're gonna lock in our screen and we're gonna lower it down onto the platen and secure the design. Be sure to press down all over for good adhesion. And once you've got it, go ahead and lift the screen remove it from the press. Now it's time to develop our screen. Okay, so I'm using a miniature exposure unit to develop the screen. It's gonna take about two and a half minutes to develop a 160 screen, but uh, the time varies depending on the size of mesh and the power of lights. When you put the screen on the exposure unit, you want the design to be sandwiched between the glass and the screen. You also wanna create good contact between the design and the screen. So I'm placing a piece of foam within the frame of the screen and then weighing it down with a piece of glass. This way, no unwanted light can get around my design. Okay, now we're gonna wash the screen out. Make sure that you use uh, a hose or, or something with some good water pressure. All right, now we're gonna start taping off our screen and we're gonna get it lined up on the press and registered on the platen so we can start screen printing. All right, so right now I'm using those registration marks that I made earlier, and I'm lining them up with the center point and the lines that I put on the platen 
and this is going to make sure that my screen is properly oriented and the design is straight. So what I just did right there was I adjusted the platen so that when a shirt is on there, the design is going to line up in the chest area of the shirt and not be, you know, all near the neck. Okay, so in case you're wondering, I'm using an old screen right now that I already had developed while the other one is um, over there drying, uh, just to save a little bit of time. So the image that you see on there is a ghost image of a, of a past design, which was a, a snake and a mouse on there. Um, but anyways, right now I'm taping off all those edges on the side just to make sure that no ink can pass through them. And it's best to do this after you register your screen, just because you want to be able to use your registration marks. And sometimes your registration marks will be covered by the tape on the sides. So you're going to tape off the back side of the screen. And then once you've done this, you're going to tape off the front side of the screen to make sure that no ink slides down in between the cracks. All right, so now we're checking for pinholes and anywhere that light is popping through the screen. All those areas are places where ink will push through and end up ruining our print. So we're gonna take tape and we're gonna tape off all those areas that are still open. And now that our screen is all prepared, we're just about ready to print. Okay, so this is a flash dryer. This is what we're gonna be using to dry the shirts. In order to get it hot, you wanna go ahead and preheat it. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and get my printing station all set up with my inks. So what we have here are screen printing fabric inks, a cup of water, which is just in case you get some ink on your hands, a squeegee, you're gonna need some paper towels, and you're gonna need a spoon or something to scoop the ink out. Right now I'm dry fitting the shirt. I wanna make sure that when the screen comes down and is lowered, that it hits the shirt directly where it should in the chest. Um, if it doesn't, I'll adjust the platen and probably pull it back or scoot it forward depending on the adjustment. Right now I'm using a temporary spray adhesive and I'm putting it all over the platen. This is so that when the shirt goes on there, it doesn't slide around when it's being printed on. So what I'm doing right now is registering my shirt and orienting it on the platen. And this is really important because you wanna make sure that the design lines up straight and that it's not crooked. So what I'm doing is checking to make sure that the seams are hanging over the side of the platen at the same distance on both sides. And what I'm doing right here is another dry fit just to make sure that the design is hitting exactly where I want it to. Okay, so the last piece of uh, screen preparation is to create some off contact between the screen and the shirt. So you wanna take a coin, a quarter, um, a washer, and tape it to the screen. That way the screen and the shirt never have to make contact. All right, now let's get ready to print. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ink and I'm gonna load it onto the screen. Uh, you can either put it on the side or at the bottom. It really depends on where you're gonna be uh, pulling from. I'm gonna be pulling from the side because my design is pretty wide. 
and um, I won't be able to get it all with the squeegee. So I'm gonna be pulling from the side. Also try to keep your hands clean, not like mine right there, but that's also why you wanna have water close by so you can always clean up. All right, so the first thing we wanna do now that we have all our ink on there is we're gonna flood the screen. We wanna make sure that the screen is up off the shirt and then we're gonna pull the ink over the design. What this does is pushes ink into the design so that it's easier for the ink to transition to the shirt once you pull it. So when you're printing your design, you wanna make sure that you're giving adequate pressure down onto the screen, as well as a consistent stroke as you pull across the design. And then once you've printed it, you're gonna go ahead and flood the screen, just like you did the first time. And because we're printing white ink over a black shirt, you really want the ink to pop. So if you only do one coat, the ink will absorb into the shirt and it'll you know, be light. So in order to get that white to be really bright, you're gonna have to do two prints on top of one another and you need to dry in between. And here goes our second print. And that's much brighter than the first time. Okay, so now we're gonna take our shirt and move it over to our drying station and prepare to repeat the process. So the reason I chose to print on a black hoodie is because to me, the hoodie itself represents a instrumental tool in racial profiling. I feel like they go hand in hand. And then the color black is to represent the people in the struggle and also the seriousness of the issue. <laughs> 